Okay, now we're ready for our fifth and final fundamental belief about fractions. So right now we've got these four beliefs right here, and I'm about to write down a fifth one, but I'm not going to actually call it a belief. I'm going to call it a consequence, because actually it's a logical consequence of the four we already have on the board. Now as a result we've seen from earlier grades, but what I want to do today is actually go through all the painstaking logic to show what we think we know already is actually true. That logic is going to be painful, I admit that. But we're going to do it once in our lives, namely now, and once we've done it once, I'm just going to write down the final result here so we can just use the result without having to think it through again. We just know it's true, therefore we just use it without going through all the logic every single time. All right, so what's the calculation? Let me do an example like uh, 7 times 3 sevenths. I've taken a fraction 3 sevenths, and I'm saying please multiply it by the same number on the bottom. Now, in early grades, you're probably taught to say, well, that's just the same as given to the sevens. The answer is 3. Okay, that's true and correct, but that's the result I want to present, but I want to actually first see why it's true. Make sure I really, truly understand why it is so. All right, so what I have to do is now play with these four fundamental beliefs here and say I want to show that that there, after some work, duh, 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 equals three. Okay, let's do it. Um, I look at this and say, this looks like a setup for belief number three. Because I've got seven times a number over a number, but belief number three would be seven times the top number, leave the bottom number alone. So let me copy that, copy that. This will be seven times the top number three, leave the bottom number alone. Yes, yes, that was belief number three. All right, okay, so I've just invoked number three here. What can I do next? Well, the next thing is actually a little bit inspired because you realize, well, we do know ordinary arithmetic. For example, in ordinary arithmetic, I happen to know that seven on the bottom could be written as seven times one because seven times one is seven. So now I'm using ordinary arithmetic by ordinary arithmetic. So that is actually at our disposal as well. We shouldn't forget we know basic facts about arithmetic as well. Uh, but why did I do that? Well, probably you see right now, I've just set myself up prime for belief number four. Seven times the number on top, seven times the number on bottom is the same fraction without the sevens there. Belief number four says, oh, get rid of the sevens. It's the same fraction as three on the top alone, one on the bottom alone. I just used belief number four. Great. But now look at it. Three over one. I'm now right for belief number one. Three over one must be, ah ha ha, three by belief number one. Bingo. So there it is. What well, we were taught in the early grades that seven times three sevens, just get rid of the sevens, is three, is indeed correct. And I bet you could actually repeat this very argument here in an abstract sense to prove that b times a over b, if I just copy this actually, almost, I bet it's verbatim, has to give the answer a in the end. In fact, that is what I'm going to write down as my consequence, consequence number five. And the reason I'm putting it down is so that we never have to do all this work again. Now we know it's true, we can just use it. We can just use it, which is fabulous. There it is. Beautiful. Now we have our five basic beliefs of fractions under underhand. This is wonderful.